Okay, how we doing, pigeon fanciers? <clears throat> I've been asked, I have a lot of guys that get a hold of me and ask me about flying widowhood or old birds or braiding or young birds. And I've always helped them, but I, um, I've never really done a video on my young bird system. Um, so I'm going to share with you how I do my young birds. Now, this is how I do it. These are my opinions. Um, there's many ways to win pigeon races. It's just you got to find what works for you and what I've done this 44 years and I really believe in the last 10 or 12 I've really really gotten good. Uh, but, but you guys can make your own decision. You might not think my ideas work but they work for me and hopefully maybe these will help you a little bit. Just a little bit of uh, my references. So 2016 until 2023 Old Birds. I only raced four Old Bird races this year. I took a little time off. Uh, but I've had 46 first place wins in our club and combine. These aren't doubles. If I won the club and kind, I won the combine both. I only counted as one. 46 times first, 47 times second, and 50 times third. Not counting how many champion birds or champion loft <clears throat> or awards I won. So, you know, what, what I do is working. It's working for me, and uh, hopefully it'll help you. Here's a little something I just got from the AU. Um, I'll share with you. And um, this is from 2022. Uh, AU Old Bird, I was second place in all of America, champion loft in 2022. That was Old Birds. Um, let me see, they sent me a whole bunch of stuff here. What's this one? Uh, seventh place National Old Bird Hall of Fame. Middle distance. Um, uh, ninth place, National Old Bird, middle distance. And this one here is first in all of Illinois, Champion Bird, Old Birds, middle distance. So what I've done is, is working. Um, I'm very, very pleased with how I do things, and I'd like to share a little bit of that with you. So let's get started from the beginning. When does your breeding season start? My next breeding season starts the minute I separate my birds right now this year. The birds must go through a good molt. They must be very fit, very healthy. Um, they must be good. <clears throat> the, the key to this success and I, and I believe it more and more um, since my Belgium, I got a very good friend in Belgium, I call him my Belgium teacher, and he stresses a lot to me, it's all, it's all about good pigeons. Everything else is BS. Uh, it's good pigeons and selection. Now when I say selection, I don't want to talk about, oh, you, they got to all be first place winners, no. Good pigeons come in many forms. Good pigeons are the ones that you have that don't get sick. Good pigeons are birds that they, they do what you want them to do easily. They're not the one that's taken three, four, or five nest boxes. Um, good pigeons work in your system and constantly be selecting and work around what is the best that you have or that you can afford. The, the key is though selection. I can't stress that enough. Um, so with that being said, we start the breeding season. I like to start mine the end of January, the first of February. I darken. Um, I've, I've went Thanksgiving before. I've put a little floor heat pig blanket out in the loft. Many of you probably seen my video on that. But I have a terrible time here with the hawks when they migrate. So, with that being said, I, I start end of uh, January, first part of February. 
I put them together. Your breeders should all go together. I can mate my breeders within a day. And I have no, they know their boxes, they know, it goes back to the good pigeon selection. Um, they, they just know what to do. And um, everything's good, they all go down on eggs, eight to ten days. You're sitting very, very good. I like to raise my young birds within about ten days apart. And what I do is I'll take and I'll um, say I got 12 pair of breeders and say seven or eight, eight pair of pumpers. All right, I'll take and put the first is when they lay, I'll take and put them underneath them eight pair of pumpers. So there's uh, so you got 12 pair, that's 24 babies, and then another eight is 16. There's 40 young birds 10 days apart. And um, I, if everything goes right and good, you shouldn't have any unfertile eggs, shouldn't have any eggs that got broke, uh, shouldn't have any problems like that. It goes back to the selection and make sure that you're ready to go. We'll do another video if you want on uh, how I prep my breeders and that. But, but for right now, everything's going good. When do you start selecting your young birds? Right here. I am very big on taking the young birds and selecting them as soon as that egg is laid. If you got a real chalky egg, the egg don't look healthy, chances are the hen didn't have enough nutrients to put in there for the embryo. I, I'm believing that more and more and more. I like my eggs to be perfect. I like them. I start right then. When the babies hatch, you have one that's behind, but it might be very healthy but it might have hatched a day later for some reason or two. You can give them a try, but if they don't mature real quick, I usually select them out. Uh, I've never had anything really turn out good that has not had that super health, or that I had to medicate, or that I had to uh, mend a broken wing on or a broken leg. I know there's exceptions, but it just, it just never has worked for me. I'm really, uh, really big on the selection, as you can probably already tell. All right, the young birds have hatched. Everything's going good. Let me get my notes here. I don't want to miss anything. Um, oh, feed additives when you're breeding. I'm not a real big fan on feed additives. If you got something that you're using that works, fine. I'm not against putting, I like the Breeder's Edge that you get from, uh, I get it from Doug Homewood out there at um, Home Art Labs. I like the Breeder's Edge, two, three days a week, maybe a vitamin. But one thing I do do, and I'm very much believe in this, is I take and I put cod liver oil on the feed daily, every day, when I feed in the mornings, only in the morning feeding. I'll put the cod liver oil, not a lot, just a light drizzle, and I mix it in there just so the feed is shiny but not wet. I want it shiny. Um, and I really believe in the cod liver oil. That was one thing that I was taught, and it, there's studies that has proved that it's good for brain development. And I really, that is one thing that I will not do without is uh, not that little drizzle of cod liver oil on the feed. Um, I really, really, truly believe in that. I also use my performance powder a couple times a week when I'm breeding two or three, but you can use anything that you like just to give them that little extra nutrients. Um, I think sometimes we overdo it on the vitamins. I don't think we need to do all as much as we do, but I do think a little bit is good. I really do. Um, Okay, let's talk about weaning. As many of you have probably already seen my young bird video I just did here a few days ago. Today's April 8th, 2023, by the way. I wean my young birds at 25 days old. 24 to 25 days. I mean, I'm very strict on that weaning. 
Um, this year I weaned my young birds March 21st. As you've seen from my video here a few days ago, they, they look like yearlings. Um, and that's what I want to try to teach you or show you how I do it. Anyway, I, I, that's one thing I believe in, weaning them at March uh, on 25 days. I think that it's the brain development. They just learn. When I wean at 25 days, you don't have to dunk any heads in the water. I never do that. I never have a baby after I wean it running up to me to my feet squawking, wanting fed or wanting, trying to get a drink. The 25 days was something that I was taught too and that, that really is good. I really believe in that. I like to get them out of the loft as soon as I can and they, um, they, they go just just as soon as I can. They can't even hardly fly. Once they get up the landing board, they're out in a settling cage for about a week, five days. I take that down. By then, we're about into the first part of April, and the hawks are usually migrated through, and I don't have much trouble. So, once they do that, they start flying around uh, the loft. Um, when I wean them, I'll keep them on the breeding mix for about five days. And then I'll switch them from 50% breeding, 50% my everyday mix that I make. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I'll do that for about a week, and then they go on the everyday mix. It's uh, my everyday mix is I can show you here. It's um, it's a very nice mix. It's uh, over, a little over 13% protein, about 12% fat, best I can figure. But you know there's not a lot of peas in it, hardly any. I, I, but there's a lot of, there's still decent protein because I mix it. I like it with the hemp. I put hemp in it. I put safflower in it, a little sunflower. I got easily digestible proteins. Your peas are hard for them to digest, and I believe that your peas will cause a lot of your intestinal problems that this E. coli and this young bird sickness and that come up with. I don't have any of that. Um, very, very rarely. And I believe it's because my birds are getting enough protein. As you've seen by the video, their feathers are beautiful. They're, they're soft, they're silky, they're, they're healthy, they're their weight is good, they're, they're not fat, they're just good, and uh, there's just um, just a lot of, of good stuff in this, and this is everyday mix that my, all my pigeons get. The only time they don't get this is when they're feeding babies, I'll give them a breeding mix, and then I don't try to get it with a lot of the peas, I try to make their protein with this easy digestible protein, but that's another story. So. Anyway, they get this everyday mix. The birds will fly around the loft like crazy. My birds loft fly hour and a half, two hours, sometimes even three hours. They just love to fly with this. You pick them up, they're, they're not skinny, their plumage, their, their feathers are nice and soft. This is something that I've really worked with over the years that I really believe in. So, let me put that up. And, um... Once they start coming out, I, I let them law fly. They, they go, they fly as much as they want, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. When I wean, because I'm not weaning until March 21st, first part of April, they go immediately into the dark. Now, I darken my loft from, let me think here, I gotta, I gotta do my math. <laughs> The lights come on at 5 a.m. and they go off 10 hours later. So 3 p.m. my loft is darkened. So they have light from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. everything else is dark. You want to have a good fan in there. I got an exhaust fan in my gable end, uh, 12 inch one. 
the air in there stays nice and fresh and it's um, it works good I got on timer kicks on for 15 minutes goes off for 30 um, if I think it needs to go on a little more I just set the timer a little different but it really works good that way and um, and I really 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 happy with the way that 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 works so um, during this first few weeks of their life I'm not so clean I I'll clean once a week um, you don't want to get too bad because you don't want to get respiratory infection in them but I believe they need a little bit of that dirt to build up immunity and I don't hardly ever medicate unless I have a problem and I think that's another thing I think my my birds have gotten a real good um, immunity system because I'm not constantly putting a bunch of stuff in the water uh, I, I just don't I just don't medicate unless I got a problem and um, fortunately I have the birds have been super healthy the last several years and I've hardly had to do any medication um, as far as once they're weaned I'll give them the breakaway or the breeders edge and um, oh that performance plus vitamin of uh, Doug's a couple times a week once twice a week if I think they need a little more I may give them a little if they're really molten heavy uh, I'll put some Sedico on the feed with some pink minerals um, and that really maybe once a week um, but that's about it I don't do a whole lot make sure you give them baths once a week give them baths any more than that sometimes they take them sometimes they don't when I pour the bath pan in on Fridays oh they just go crazy and and that's another thing you know by April we're getting warm you can give a bath every every week um, I really like the I really like weaning them later now my birds will stay on the dark until right around the 4th of July maybe a week later maybe a week sooner depending on how they are um, but right around the 4th of July I don't cut it off the 21st of June I like to go a little bit later try to hold them because see we fly into the middle of October so I usually don't have no problem holding them but during this whole time of darkening they're loft flying good they're you're getting them to trap you're they're listening everything's going good if I have one or two that just don't want to go out and fly with the rest of them that are just lazy I'll select them out um, I've never been able to make a racehorse out of a mule um, I don't I, I just have never had no luck with it so I just don't uh, but I'll, I'll select them out if they don't you know there might be some underlying reason why they they can't keep up you know but um, but anyway now we're up to oh let's just say about end of May middle of May end of May and I do and this is where my system gets a little different you know anybody can darken the loft for 10 hours a day you know have lights for 10 hours a day and one other thing I want to say about the lights I um, I'm very very big on I want the light the same every day I use the daylight bulbs those LED daylight bulbs and even though the sun's up I leave my lights on they got the same light every day and I really believe that's important um, one more thing I want to show you is that I think it's even more important than feed is grit Janine my wife is the one that mixes the grit I use Versalaga grits I use the redstone from Versalaga the grit and redstone from Versalaga the seaweed from Versalaga we take two parts of each of them and I say parts like these containers you know you can use these this is one part take two of these of each of them and then I take one of the all-in-one and mix in and, um, and that's what it looks like I give my birds grit every day actually every time I feed I don't pour it in I sprinkle a little bit in a little dish and they eat 90% of it up and then next feeding I put a little bit more in 
I believe the fresh grit is an, is one of the biggest biggest tips I can tell you right there. So, all right, now we're getting up until oh about the end of May. At the end of May, I start doing what I call my system. I'll I'll go out. I'll catch the birds in the evening, right at dark. I'll put them in my hand baskets, put them in the back of my truck, I'll pull my truck in the barn, and they'll be in the dark all night in the barn. I then in the morning will take them birds out. I don't release them in the yard. I Some guys do, and you know, that that's fine if you do. I don't. I take them back out to the loft. I put them back in the loft. I'll feed them, water them then let them out to law fly. I'll do that 10 to 15 times before I ever start. It might be right around the first part of May, third, second, second week in May. I want them birds to get calm and not be afraid of that basket. After 10 or 15 times of doing that every day, I can literally set the basket on the floor of the loft and the birds will be all over the top of it and wanting to walk inside of it. And um, you don't have that when you first put birds in flying and bouncing and carrying on. Mine just sit there like old birds. And I, that's another thing I really believe in. About the end of May then, first part of June, I'll start doing my I don't call I don't road train much, but I, I I believe in I don't believe I can teach them how to come home. I I do believe though I can teach them confidence. And I believe that the birds either know how to come home or they don't. I don't think that's something I can teach them, but I can teach them confidence. I will then start right down the gravel road here from me. I don't know how many poles I can see the loft and it might be a quarter of a mile and I'll basket them up now remember they've been in the basket 10 to 15 times already they're calm I go out there they don't even move they just sit there and I'll go down and I'll have a sheet like this with all my band numbers and I'll take a highlighter and um, I'll go down here pull over on the side of the gravel road or over here at the neighbor's farm whatever it's not that important and I'll let them out of the basket one at a time. And they'll come out, they'll start going home. As I let them go, I'll highlight their band number, I'll reach in, grab another one. I'm probably letting two, maybe two and a half, maybe three birds go in a minute. The birds will come out and they'll come home, they'll fly, you know, they'll, they'll fly around the loft. They're, they're not, you know, there's, they're going to loft fly. But they don't hardly ever get together. You might have two or three, but by the third or fourth time doing this, them birds literally come home and they never, ever, never circle. They just, boom. They, they got their confidence, they know what the game is, and, and they do that. I will do that probably 15 times out until about three four miles and I'll do that every day it's nice I'll let them go like that and uh, and then they just really I mean as I'm doing that they, they don't even circle I mean they literally and I, I'm not kidding they can they come home just like a necklace really really good they're very confident then I'll get about five miles and, I, and I'll do that once and then from there I'll go to the eight mile mark the eight mile mark is where I really feel like I'm starting to train. Depending on how confident I am, I might let them go one by one at the eight mile mark, but most of the time I'll let them go in groups of 10. Like usually I have 40 young birds. I'll let one basket of 10 go. I'll wait two minutes. I'll let another basket of 10 go. I'll wait a couple more minutes. I'll let they don't get together. They, by then, they've already got the confidence that they really need to do it. And they literally come out, make a half a loop, and are gone. If they make them little itty bitty circles, something's wrong. Um, something's wrong. 
but they they don't do it. When I get my my birds right, I've let them go 90 seconds apart, five at a time, out 20, 25 miles, and I'll let them go 90 seconds apart, and they don't even circle, and they will literally clock 90 seconds apart. This five, that five, that five. I can tell by the Unicon when they're clocking. I know it sounds crazy, but they do it. But I think that's, I think that's because of all the, the work I do with them when they're, when they're young. Anyway, we're at the eight mile mark. I'll do that maybe two times, and uh, then maybe the third time, or maybe out on the second time. Then I'll start letting them go maybe all together at the. Let me think here. I go the eight. Then I'll go to the 13 mile mark, and I might do it once, but then after that I let them all go together. I'll go 13 miles, 20 miles, 30, 33 miles, and that's usually about as far as I go. Occasionally, like this year, I think I ended up going about 40. Um, I had to go around something, and it ended up being about 40 miles, 45, I don't know. But I don't, I don't beat them down the road and go hard. Usually I like to get, I figure my training starts at that 8 mile mark. And if I get 8 to 10 tosses on the birds before the first race, I'm very happy. Very happy. But there's one thing about this. If your birds are not law flying good at home. When I law fly my birds, they're giving me an hour, hour and 10, hour and 20, some days even more. If your birds are not loft flying good, then you got a road train. Um, this is not a this is not a catch off for not road training. If the birds are flying good around the house and you're getting them conditioned, then you don't have to go down the road as much once you get out to the 30 mile mark. I really don't think you need to go any more than 30. I 30, 33, 35, whatever it is. I. I've won a lot of races, never training any further than that, and never hardly training. Um, but one thing is my birds are always conditioned very well. So anyway, that's about the training. Um, now we're getting them, now we're going to want to get them race ready. When you start getting them out to them miles, think of the risk versus the reward. The wind's blowing a little hard today, but you know they should be able to make it. Well, if you're trained early enough and you're not rushing, you should never be rushing into this, then why take the risk? What's the reward? What are they going to learn if you bust them up? The object is not to lose them. The object is to get them conditioned in their minds and in their bodies and the confidence that they need to come home. So you um, do a risk and reward thing. What am I going to gain by going today? What am I going to possibly lose? If the risk outweigh the rewards, they're just going to law fly. Um, but I'm not a big trainer. You know, this is the way I do it. One of the reasons why I do this is I've been retired now a little over three years. But when I worked, I worked 10, 12 hours a day, six days a week. I couldn't drive them down the road. So I developed this system right here around the house. And um, it's worked good for me. Now we're going to start getting them race ready. The whole time that you're doing this, you're going to have the birds on the everyday mix. Now one thing I will do when they really start going good and I'm really working them, I'll add one more part patty rice and a half part barley to my everyday mix. That stuff's already in it, but this here will lighten it up a little bit more. And um, the birds really get, they fly very good on the everyday mix. I'm not so sure I have to do it with this lighter stuff, but I do. And, uh, and that's what I do. Now we're about three weeks before your race season. Now, your birds should already be training good. Things should be going good. Everything should be very good. 
Now what I now now here's what we're going to do. We're going to call this getting them race ready. Um, regularity is key. I really believe that regularity brings on form. I know there's guys that can't feed the same time every day, exercise the same time. I understand that, and there's probably guys that do very good. But I have always been a big believer is 5 o'clock, the birds are eating. Well, 5.15, be honest with you. Not 5.10, not 5.20. 5.15, I'm feeding the birds in the evening. In the morning, I try to law fly between 6.15, 6.30. And I say between them is because there might be a little fog or a reason why I can't. But everything's the same. When you get them on a regular schedule, the form comes a lot easier. That's the way I, it does for me. And I, again, everything, I try to be real regular with them. All right, now we're getting them ready for the races. And the birds are looking great. Uh, as you've seen from the video I did here a couple days ago, I couldn't be more happier with my birds. Now, the... Some guys don't like motivation. I motivate everything. Widowers, hens, you name it. These young birds, I really believe in motivation. But, don't overdo it. You love watching them big widowhood cocks. If you fly widowhood, you know, on old birds and that. Oh, this is great to watch. I don't do this with the young birds. There's a lot of times, if I do separate them, you, you actually need for young birds, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, minimum two sections, three sections better. I do a lot of little games with them. I may separate them one week. And then you got to loft fly them separate. And then um, on basseting, they let them together. I don't let them together and then go right to the enter them in the race. I'll let them together in the morning and then I'll re-separate them and let them go over and then I'll basket them from their section calm. I want everything calm. Um, there's a lot of times I'll basket my young birds. Young birds you can really key and I think it, uh, it, it can hurt you. It's not like an old bird where you're really going to get them wound to come. Yeah, I really think that it can hurt you a lot. I might catch my young birds up at 10 o'clock in the morning, put them in the back barn, it's dark, and leave them sit there all day until we basket at 5.30. Uh, make sure they got water, of course. And young birds don't like to drink, so I won't do that a lot if it's hot. This is something I might do a little later in the season when the weather's cool. Um, another thing I do... I got three sections in my young bird loft. I may separate them. But what I'll do is I'll put yearling cocks in that middle section. And I won't let the birds even loft fly, say, from Tuesday on. Maybe Wednesday I'll put them yearling cocks in that middle section. And then birds on each side, I hear them cocks in there. Them young hens are going crazy for them older cocks. They can't get to them. Them young cocks are mad because there's an old man in their box. And all for three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we basket Saturday, they are just stewing. But I remember, I'm not letting them birds out to loft fly. You know, we might have already, they've been going every week. It ain't going to hurt them. When I'm doing that, I don't feed them quite as much. You know, I, they still get as much as they need. But if they're not exerting themselves, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But, and then I'll basket them from each of them sides. That, I've had very good races doing that. Very good races. Big drops doing that. Um, the sliding door, that works. If I had more time, I'm retired, that's funny, but... Uh, ideally, I'd like to do like they do in Belgium, a lot of them. Make the old cocks to young hens and the young cocks to old hens and have an extra section. 
and then fly them traditional widowhood to each. But that's just, yeah, it, it don't that don't need to be done here, not for this. But um, but I do believe in some sort of motivation. Um, you've already got the feathers beautiful. You got everything beautiful. Everything's going good. Um, but that's just a few things I do. But don't overdo it. Do not overdo it. During the week, I may go one time 20 miles, if that, and train. Maybe. It depends on how they're flying. If my birds are flying an hour, hour and a half, on, they fly on Sunday, on Monday. Old birds I usually don't let out, but I might let the young ones out if it was an easy race. Um, Tuesday, they're flying an hour and a half in the morning an hour in the afternoon. Wednesday they're going to fly an hour and a half in the morning. They might fly an hour and a half in the afternoon. I may let them out Thursday. I may not. They might not get out again to the race. I don't want to fly my race during the week. But when your birds are really going strong like this and really flying hard, the law flying, you've got to make sure you're putting the calories in. If you're not letting them out during the week and only going down the road once or maybe twice, maybe a little less calories. You know, that's something that you got to figure out. I don't know what your schedules are. But that's a couple little things I do. As far as supplements, let me think. When they come home, they usually have clear water or maybe electrolytes in it, grape sugar, something just to rebuild them. Um, one product I do like that I use is I get from uh, Belgium. It's uh, Dr. Brokamp's ProBac 1000. My Belgium teacher loves it, so I started using it. It's a probiotic electrolyte. I'll give that maybe Monday. I might even give it to them when they come home, depending. Um, during the week on Wednesdays, I usually put a little cod liver oil on the feed and my performance powder. Um, maybe a vitamin in the middle of the week. Just really not, not a whole lot of stuff. I'll feed them my everyday mix starting Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Wednesday night, I'll give them half. Um, I use um, Versalaga Black Label champion and uh, energy and I'll give them 50-50 of that and 50-50 of my everyday mix and then Thursday and Friday they'll get the Versalaga they might only get it on Friday if it's a short race going to be a fast race they don't need all that calories um, that's something you got to kind of weigh out if it's a 300 mile race I'll give it to them Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning on basketing day on Saturday I will feed my birds six, seven times. My birds are never hungry to begin with. I, I try to give them as much as they want. But the reason I can give mine as much as they want is because I'm really working them around the loft. They, they fly a lot. And um, if they're not, then I wouldn't give them all they want. But on basketing day, I'll have a treat mix. Safflower, hemp, some finch food. Um, some of that energy mix. I mix it all together. It's like a real nice treat mix. And when I, I don't pour it in by the can, I'll give them a few handfuls. And um, five, six times. If your birds are in really good condition, they're not going to eat anyway. They just aren't going to eat. So I'm wanting to make sure that they're getting a little bit in them. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I, I've missed out on. And um, that's about it. That's about all I do. And um, don't over motivate your pigeons. I think you can you can hurt them, but I do believe that you, that motivation's good. I don't care if it's if you got like a middle section, have a pair sitting and they're on eggs, young ones. You know they'll come to eggs too. Um, I don't like it because then they don't law fly as well. But I very rarely get eggs. When I'm racing my young birds every week and they're exercising like this and, and, and in all honesty there's times right before the races 
where I really don't even like to loft fly them because they're giving me two to three hours every time I let them out. <clears throat> and um, beautiful to watch, but then you know they're right. But when them birds are really doing that, they're not they're not laying eggs. They're they're too they're using up too much energy. So and you don't want all that. You want that energy on race day, not on anything else. So but I hope I hit on everything. Um, as far as my everyday mix, I can give you the formula of that. Um, it's two parts Des Moines Breeder. Two parts Versalaga Black Label Champion, two parts White Milo, two parts Safflower, a half part Hemp, a half part Barley, a half part Black Oil Sunflower Seeds, and one part um, Patty Rice. You know, somebody's guys are saying, what's Patty Rice? Well, they use that a lot over in Belgium. And and I can get it here in America, and I like it. And when I say parts, this is one part. I don't care if you use a five-pound coffee can or a five-gallon bucket. One part's one part. And um, it works really good. My everyday mix, I think it's about a little over 13% protein, best I can figure. And 12% um, fat when I add the... Uh, extra patty rice and barley in it, it drops it down about 10% fat and maybe, I don't know, 12% protein. But, um, don't, I, I really believe in feeding the birds if they're working. If they're not working, you can cut it down. Um, but hopefully this uh, helps you. There, there's not much to the dark system. Turn the lights on, make sure the loft's dark. And, uh, but make sure you got plenty of air in there. You want the ventilation. You want to have, um, I got that exhaust fan in the gable. And it, um, you want to, you got to have air. If you don't have air, you're going to have respiratory problems. And, um, the, the biggest things I can, I can tell you that work for me is selection is the key. Your breeders, make sure they're in the breeding condition. Just like race condition, your breeders need to be in the breeding condition. If they're not, hold off a week or two breeding until you get them that way. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. I think I had 16 pair of breeders this year. 15, 15 or 16, I'm thinking. They all went down one day apart when they laid. And I had all but one egg that was not fertile out of a nine-year-old cock. 100% fertile, 100% hatch, 100% beautiful babies. Um, it's just, but they they were ready. They were in the condition. They they got to be ready. If they're not, and you're not getting fertile eggs, or not laying on schedule, you really you really need to think about what I what can I do to do it better. Um, when I have a, a bad race or a bad toss or this, I, I don't hardly have bad tosses anymore. I think a lot of that's because I spend so much time with them, really getting the confidence in them. But I look at, there's only one place where you got to look and really think about what it did. And I look in the mirror and I say, what did I do wrong? Did I not select hard enough? Did I not have the breeders ready? Did I not get the young ones healthy enough? Did I not get them good enough? Um, it's, there's only one person to blame, and that's you. And I look in the mirror. All the, I don't blame the wind. I don't blame the other fancier that can train 50 times. I don't blame. I look in the mirror. What can I do better? And um, you're you're the you're the one that can control it. And just by selection, and really really keeping the best so anyway i hope this helped guys and um i'm sure i missed something if there's anything you want to know just drop me a comment and i'll try to answer as best i can so anyway good luck racing and um thanks again for subscribing to my channel thank you bye bye